Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be learning how to create this gold wireframe build animation in Blender. I got this idea from the new Marvel film Eternals from this scene right here, where the weapon creates itself. I thought it looked pretty cool so I decided to recreate this effect in Blender. Using any curve object you are able to create this. For this animation I used a single vertex and I basically traced out the sword and then converted it to a curve. To keep things simple, I'm going to be using the Blender logo for this tutorial. Fortunately for us, the Blender logo actually has an option for us to download it as an SVG. I will link this page in the description. Once you have it, you can jump over into Blender and then import it in by going over to File, down to Import, and then selecting the SVG. Once you import it in, it's very, very small, so make sure you select everything by box selecting it and then scaling the entire thing up. We're going to scale it up pretty big and then place it in the middle of our scene. We don't really need the extra objects, so select the extra parts of the logo and delete them because you're not going to need them. We only really want the main part of the logo. Now that we have the logo in our scene, let's go over the curve settings and I'm going to talk about how to create this effect. To make things simple, let's select both of these and press Ctrl J to join them together as one curve object. Next, over in the fill mode, we don't really need it. We don't need a face, so switch it over to none right there. If we open up the geometry tab, we can give it some thickness by changing the depth right here. You'll notice though, if I drag it up just slightly, it creates a huge amount of bevel, even though the value is so small. Well, the reason for that is because we scaled everything up really big. So make sure you press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Next, if we go into edit mode and press A to select everything and open up the properties tab by hitting N, you're going to notice the mean radius is set to 284. That means it's going to multiply the depth by that value. That's not going to look very good and that's why it's scaling everything so big. So make sure you set the mean radius down to a value of 1 and now the depth should actually work correctly. So if we drag this up, you're going to see it's actually working properly. The next step is to clean up our curve. You'll notice that there's some parts of the curve that have these weird shading issues. And the reason that's happening is because there are two vertices right on top of each other. If we go into edit mode, we can select the one X and then delete that vertex. That will fix the issue. Go around the curve and make sure you do that for every single part that has that weird issue. Now let's talk about how to animate the build effect. And that is done by using the start and end in the mapping section over here in the geometry panel. At the moment, if we drag this up, you can see it's not working. And that's because our curve is a complete loop. We need to add in a hole in the middle of our curve. You might think to go into edit mode and then delete one of the vertices, but you're going to notice that it doesn't create a hole. It's still right there. It's a complete loop. Instead, what you need to do is select two vertices then press X and delete the segments, not the vertices. Delete the segments and that will create a hole in the middle. From there, select one of the parts and then just fill out the hole. So we'll select right there, press E to extrude and drag it down until it's right in the same position, just like that. Now what happens is if we drag up the start, you're gonna see that this is the effect that we're getting. We can actually animate this value and it will create the build effect. We need to do that exact same thing for the inner circles. So go into edit mode and delete two of the segments. So select two of them, X and delete the segments. Then grab them and move them into place. Keep in mind, wherever you create this hole, that is where the build animation is going to start. So if you want your animation to start building at this point, then create a hole right there. But if you want it to start building over here, create a hole right here on this curve. To actually get the build effect, we need to animate the end value. If we drag this down, you're going to notice that it starts to create this effect. But there are two problems. One problem is I don't want it to go in this direction. I want it to go in the opposite direction. And another problem is I don't want these to go in the same direction. I want one to go this way and the other one to go this way. So to fix that, you can go into edit mode. We'll select the outer logo right here, and then we'll select the inner logo and press Control L. And then to switch the direction, all you have to do is right click and then click on switch direction. So let's animate this value. I'm going to bring the end frame all the way down to zero and then add in a keyframe right on that side. 
We're going to jump all the way to frame 200 and drag the end all the way up to a value of 1 and then add in another keyframe. Let's take a look at this by restarting our animation and playing it. And this is the effect that we're getting. Now let's talk about the mapping start and end values. These are how the mapping is going to affect the animation. With it set to resolution, what it's going to do is it's going to take the geometry of your object and base the end value on that. For example, if we scroll up to this part of our logo and then we scroll forward a little bit, you're going to see at this point, if we go into edit mode, there's a big chunk that is missing a lot of geometry. So this part is going to go very fast and then play it. You can see this part's slow, this part's fast, and then it becomes slow again because there is more geometry. That is because the end is set to resolution. The segments work a little bit different. It takes the number of subdivisions and the length of each segment and bases the end value on that. You can see here if I select the segments and restart, it's going to create this effect, which is a little bit different, but you'll notice this part is still a little bit faster. What we want is we want the end to be set over to spline. This will take the entire length of the curve and base the end on that. So now everything is going to move at the exact same speed all throughout the entire animation and that is what we want. If we go to the middle of our animation, you're going to notice that it's very harsh along this side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a taper effect using this taper option over in the geometry panel. How this works is we need to add in a new curve. So press shift A, go over to curve, and then add in a Bezier curve. Go into edit mode, and then we're going to drag this down so it's completely flat. From this point, select your original logo, and for the taper object, select the new curve that we just added. You'll notice everything disappears, but don't worry, it's still there. We need to go into edit mode on our new curve and then move the vertices around. If we drag the right vertex up, you're going to see this is the effect that we're getting. Now we have that taper effect. So now if we restart and play it, this is the effect that we're getting. But you can see it's actually inverted, so what we need to do is select it, and then click on Map Taper, and that will fix that issue. If it's still thick on one side, all you have to do is just invert it. So we'll drag this part down, and then we'll drag this vertex up like that, and that's going to give us the effect that we need. So now if we restart and play it, here is the result that we're getting. At this point, you can control how thick that part on the end is. If you want it to be thicker, just drag this value up. If you want it to be thinner, drag it down. Another thing to keep in mind is if you go in the negative direction along the Y, it's actually going to add thickness on the outer edge of the curve. As you can see, the part where it's thinner is actually in the middle rather than the end. So make sure this vertex is above in the positive direction along the Y, and that'll make sure it's thin just like that. So after playing around with the depth value and the thickness of the curve, I think this is a good result. Let's go ahead and restart our animation and play it, and here is the result that we're getting. As you can see, that looks much better because it has that taper effect. Finally, the last thing that we'll do for this animation is we're going to delete that taper effect at the end of the animation. Our animation ends at frame 200, so let's get rid of the taper at 200. To do that, we need to animate the shape of this Bezier curve. We can do this by adding in some shape keys over in the curve properties. We're going to add in a new basis curve shape, and then we'll add in a keyframe right there. With the value set at 0, this is the shape that we're going to get. We're going to drag this value all the way up and then go into edit mode. To make the taper disappear, we need to drag this up until the vertices are in line with each other. So right about there is perfect, just like that, so it's a completely straight line. And as you can see, the taper is now gone. If we drag this value down to zero now, you can see the curve goes back to its original position and the taper reappears. If we drag it all the way up to one, the taper disappears and now this curve is very flat. So all we have to do is animate this value. On frame 150, we're gonna drag this all the way down to zero, add in a keyframe. Then on frame 200, when the animation ends, this is gonna go all the way up and the taper will disappear. Now before this tutorial ends, let's create that gold metallic material with that really cool light going across it. Over in the material tab, we're going to click use notes to create a new material. What we need to do first is create that gold look. 
we're gonna bring the metallic all the way up to one and the roughness all the way down to 0.1. And then for the base color, we're gonna select a nice gold color somewhere around there. Let's press Z and go into rendered view to see what we're doing. Next, we're gonna add in an emission. So we'll press shift A, add in a shader and emission. Then we'll add in a mix shader and mix these two together. We'll deal with the color and the strength of this later, but for now we need to add in where we want the emission to be on our curve. What we're going to do is add in a texture and a noise texture. Then with the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can press Ctrl T to add in a mapping and a texture coordinate node. Instead of using the generated, we're going to use the UV and plug it into the vector. Let's take a look at this by Ctrl Shift left clicking on the noise texture. To see this a bit better, we're going to add in a color ramp and then drag the black handle closer and the white handle closer as well, and here is the effect. Using the UV node from the texture coordinate node will allow us to move the noise texture along the curve. We can do this by animating the X location. If we drag the X location up, you can see it's actually moving along the curve. If you look down here, it's gonna move along the curve just like that. So this is gonna give us a really cool effect once we animate this. To animate it, we're gonna go hashtag frame to add in a new driver, divided by 250. Now if we play this, this is the result that we're getting. So we're basically going to take this noise texture as a mask for the emission. Before we do that though, there is a couple of settings that I want to change in this noise texture. First off, the scale, I wanna drag up to 15, and I don't want there to be any detail, so I'm gonna drag that down to zero. The roughness, I'm also gonna drag down to a value of 0.2. If we take a look at the noise texture, you can see we have these long streaks right here, which I don't really like. To fix that, we can set the scale of the Y to a much lower value. Let's go 0.05 and enter. And then here is the result that we get. Now we have actual like splotches of noise, which we can use for the emission. I only want the emission to appear along the edges of where the noise is. We can do this by adding in an input and a Fresnel node. We'll place it above the noise texture. We'll then take the color ramp and shift D it and drag it above. We'll take the factor, plug it into the factor, and then control shift left click on this. As you can see, there is a thin line along the top and the bottom of our logo. We can control this line by changing this value here. If you go lower, it's gonna appear more like that. Let's go with a value of about 0.9. Then to actually mix these two together, we're gonna add in a converter math node and place it here. We'll take the color, plug it into the bottom input, and then set this down to multiply. We can take the value and plug it into the mix shader factor, and then we can control shift left click on this. Now you can see the effect that we're getting. If we then drag the strength of the emission up to let's say 50, here is the effect that we have. As for the color of the emission, you can use the same color as the base color for the principled shader. And that's the effect that we get. And that is basically it for the material. After this, you can experiment with the strength of the emission. You can also enable bloom in the render settings, add in a plain and a dark background, and you can create some really cool results. Another thing I wanted to mention in this tutorial is this effect right here where we have some weird glowing issues along the curve. That is due to the filter size and the sample count. The filter size basically helps the render look a bit better. If you bring this a lot lower, it's gonna make that effect even worse and the splotchiness is gonna appear more visible, but if you go too high, it becomes way more grainy. So I found a value of about 1.8 works for this scene. You also wanna bring up the sample count. You can see my viewport is at 16, but if I drag this up to 256, that's gonna help smooth out that line as you can see there. So for the render amount, I'm gonna bring it up to 256. And there you go, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned something new or created your own cool wireframe build animation, I would love to see it. So make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other suggestions for tutorials in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.